everyone. Um, we just want to give everybody a few minutes to get logged on to today's webinar. Um, if you're already here, if you could just let me know whether or not you can hear me and see my screen, I'm going to flip through the first couple of slides. Um, if you could just go into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel and just type yes if you can see my slides and if you can hear me talk. Um, so that way when uh, three o'clock rolls around, we can go ahead and get started. All right, perfect, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so it is three o'clock Eastern time. Hello everyone, and thanks for joining me today on our second webinar for Giving Black Day, Black Day called Let's Talk Strategy. Um, if you attended our last webinar, you may find my voice familiar. My name is Linda Gerhardt, and I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. I've been with the company since 2016, and I've overseen a lot of Giving Days. I'm really excited to work with Giving Black Day this year um, because, it's a really great cause, has lots of really interesting, diverse organizations raising money. Um, so hopefully I can give you some tips today that will help you succeed on the big day. So just to give you a little bit of context about who Mighty Cause is and why we're hosting this webinar, um, we are the new technology partner for Giving Black Day. Um, Giving Black Day is going to be hosted on the Mighty Cause platform this year. Um, in the previous year, it was sort of, you know, different platforms and then you reported your results, but this brings it to one central location um, to make things easier for you as the nonprofits raising money and for the donors. Um, <clears throat> And we're here to support you on the big day um, as you're gearing up for it, as you're editing your page. So if you have any questions as you're setting up your profile and customizing your page, or if you need to know how to do something, if you wanna get somebody on the phone to help you do something that on the platform, or even if you have a donor with a question, our support team is here to assist you. Um, you can email us at support at mightycause.com. Um, and the platform itself, Mighty Cause, is a fully functional nonprofit fundraising platform that organizations like yours can use 365 days a year to raise money for their causes. Um, we've been around since 2006, so we're one of the older platforms in the industry, and we are actually the only platform at this point that is not funded by, invest by investors and venture capitalists. We are an employee-owned company, um, and we've been doing giving days since our inception, really. So we've been doing this kind of event for a long time. Our technology is solid. We are able to handle this kind of big event. And we're really excited to uh, host Giving Black Day this year. Um, so I just wanted to give you a quick look at today's agenda. Um, we'll be reviewing some of the basics of Giving Days. For those of you who may have missed our previous webinar, webinar or just need a little bit of a refresher, and then we're gonna move into Giving Day strategy so you can start building your campaign. Um, and we'll also do a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. But because we've got a lot to go through in this webinar, if you have a question that you think of while I'm presenting, just type that into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, and we'll make sure that we have time to get to it at the end end of the presentation. All right, so with the housekeeping out of the way, we will get into the Giving Day basics. The first thing that you need to do to participate in Giving Black Day is to register your nonprofit. Um, registration is just a short form to fill, up, fill out to let us know a little bit more about your organization. Um, Young Black and Giving Back Institute, is the, uh, they're reviewing the registrations and they're working hard to approve them very quickly. So once you fill it out, you should hear back from them in a couple of days. Um, the deadline to register is coming up pretty soon. That's August 14th. That's the last day to register for the event. So that's exactly one week from now. Um, so if you're on this webinar and you haven't yet completed the registration form, you have my full permission to open up a tab in your browser and complete that registration form as I'm talking because it's super important to kickstart your campaign. 
Once you've filled out and submitted your registration form, you'll need to complete the items on your to-do list. Um, this is not required for the event, but we'll talk a little bit more about why this is important. Um, the list is located on the welcome screen of your nonprofit's profile right under your metrics. So when you log in and you access your nonprofit's profile, this is the page you'll end up on if you're logged in as an administrator. There are five basic items to complete. Um, you need to add a background image to your page or use one from our gallery of stock background images. Upload your logo, which will represent you throughout the Giving Black Day site. Add a story, um, also called a description on the platform, that tells visitors to your profile what your nonprofit organization does um, and what you do in the world and why they should support you. Um, and then build a thank you page to thank your donors. That'll show up after the checkout process. So after they've completed their um, donation, they'll be able to see uh, your thank you page with whatever you choose to put on there. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. And you can also set up EFT, electronic funds transfer, so that you can get the funds you raised through direct deposit, which means you'll get them a lot quicker than if we have to cut a check and send that to you through the postal service. Um, if you click the link in your to-do list, um, you'll be taken right to the spot on your profile where you can complete that task. So it's very easy to complete this list. Um, this isn't required, but profiles that are filled out get more donations on giving days on Mighty Cause. So before you get into the weeds, planning your campaign or start thinking about social media, it's really important to take the time to complete your to-do list. Um, if you're unsure how to complete any of these items or you need a little additional help, um, we're here for you. Just email us at support at mightycost.com. And we also have a really comprehensive support library that you can access through the Mighty Cost platform um, that has videos and support articles and walkthroughs that will help you out as well. So there's a couple of different ways you can get in touch with us and get assistance if you find that you're struggling to complete that to-do list. So, again, as we talked about, nonprofits that complete their profiles, um, they just raise more money on giving days because it says to the people who visit the page that you've shown that page some love and you've customize it, you've made it your own. And then as we're gonna talk about a little bit more in the webinar, there's a lot of places where you can use your page to actually make your donation appeal. So it's really important to complete this to-do list. Um, it's, it's you know super easy, these are easy wins, and these are easy things you can do to make your, non, your nonprofit's profile more filled out and more interesting for donors to look at. Um, your logo, um, that's really important to up upload because it represents you throughout um, the Giving Day site. So on the Giving Black Day site, on the live event, there's gonna be a leaderboard and your nonprofit will be represented there. And you want your logo there to represent you. You also want it to appear in searches. Um, and the EFT portion of it, we can still send you a check. We do recommend signing up for EFT um, so that you can get your disbursement faster after the giving day is over. Um, and your thank you page is really important because statistically it's really important to, th to thank your donors promptly. How quickly donors are thanked is statistically hugely important in whether or not they choose to give again to a nonprofit organization. So having this thank you page kind of automates that process and gives you a little breathing room so that if you want to do a separate onboarding process, if you want to send them a welcome pack packet or call them on the phone, you have the space to do that because you've already thanked them. So um, definitely show some love to your profile, complete your to-do list. These are, again, five easy wins um, that will help your page look more filled out, more professional, and be more engaging to supporters. We also recommend taking some time to get to know your dashboard. Um, your dashboard, which we like to call your Mighty Cause Manager, is basically your fundraising toolbox for Giving Black Day. Um, your Mighty Cause Manager is the dashboard that appears on the left side of the screen when you're logged in and on your nonprofit's profile. You'll automatically land on your welcome screen or your home screen, which is where you find that to-do list, um, as well as the metrics for your nonprofit and news and updates related to the giving day. Um, under profile, you can edit your page in the page editor, um, adjust your page settings, where you can add you can set your goal for Giving Black Day and enable a progress bar that appears on your page that shows how you're progressing toward that overall goal. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can also go back to live view to see how your page will look to visitors without actually logging out of your account because that's kind of annoying to do just to see how the page is going to look to somebody who's not a manager of the, that profile. 
Below that on your dashboard is the donation section, which is your one-stop shop for everything related to donation management and your checkout process for Giving Black Day. Um, you're able to view and export your donation report. And just as a tip, the view on the page is limited since we don't have the space to display all of the information we collect about each donation. So if you're looking for something in particular, you will want to export a spreadsheet of that has all of the information you could possibly need about your, the donation itself and the donor. Um, so you can export that really easily on your donation screen, but I just wanted to make you aware that that's there just in case you're looking for a piece of information that is not viewable on the page itself. Um, you can view and manage your disbursements. So when you get your first deposit, you can check in to see what was included and balance your books. If you're missing a donation, it may be because of the date. That shouldn't happen with this giving day, but that allows you to see the, the disbursement report. Um, you also have your donor experience section, which we're going to talk about in a few slides as well as matching grants which we're also going to go into more detail about later on you can easily view and access any pages that are connected to your nonprofit from the campaign screen so if you have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising happening you can easily access those pages from your campaign screen and then you also have your settings page where you can manage your settings your profile is the face of your nonprofit for Giving Black Day, so you'll want to make sure that it looks good and it represents your organization well. So, you, as you know, this is just where, I'm sorry, just uh, so you know, this link is the link you'll share with your supporters to ask them to make a donation for Giving Black Day. So, to share your page, just copy and paste the URL, the address that's in your browser. Um, and we also have a shortened URL that you can use to share on social media or if you just want to shorten that link, which is available um, in your social media settings. So as you're going through your to-do list, you'll want to customize your profile to match your brand. Um, you can change your theme color to match your logo and your brand colors, upload media to your gallery and add your social media accounts to add some visual interest to your page. And your story or description is really the centerpiece of your page. In your story, you can put your mission statement, you can add photos and video, um, just as a note, for videos, you do need to upload them first to YouTube or Vimeo. They both have free basic accounts that you can use um, because we're not able to actually host the videos, but you can certainly embed them so people can stay on your page and watch them. Um, this spot is really where you can go in depth about your work and make a strong case to donors, tell them why your nonprofit needs support, and show the impact of your work. Um, so if you have a specific thing that you're raising money for, for Giving Black Day, for instance, that would be a great thing to talk about in your story. Um, you can have the best campaign strategy in the world, you can be awesome at social media, but when your profile page, the page that people actually visit when they click the button that says donate, doesn't look like you've shown it any love, you may actually end up losing those donors. So it's just really important to make sure that this strongly reflects your brand, it looks good, and it's something that you're proud to show people on Giving Black Day. Um, one of the really awesome things about Mighty Cause is that your nonprofit actually has a lot of control over the donation process, which is unique among fundraising platforms. Um, from our donor experience tool, you can opt into collecting the information that you want from donors, like addresses and phone numbers. Um, you can also set up custom suggested donation amounts and add those to your checkout process, along with um, descriptions of what those amounts provide to help tie those numbers, those monetary amounts, um, to services or items that your nonprofit is able to provide with that amount of money. Um, donor experience also allows you to preview the whole checkout process without actually having to make a test donation. So you can see what your final donation process looks like, and you can use that to edit yourself if needed. Sometimes when you're you know, going through options, you don't see how that makes the process longer for the donor. Um, so when you go through that yourself, just see how cumbersome it feels, if there's anything that maybe you could lose, um, but you, you, can make, you can preview that whole experience start to finish um, from your your donor experience page, um, which is really helpful so that you know what the donors are seeing and you can make sure that you've got the options that you want to have present there in your checkout process. Um, donor experience is also where you'll set up your thank you page, which uses the same inline text editor as your story on your profile page. 
So you can add text, you can add links, you can add a video, an image, um, and you can also add a custom call to action or CTA button that tells donors where you'd like them to go next. So a cool idea for that would be, for instance, if you want them to go sign up for your email list after they complete their donation. So there's a lot you can do with the donor experience tool. Um, so you can optimize your campaign and you can really customize the checkout experience for donors. And before we move on to the meat of this webinar and dive into campaign strategy, I just wanted to mention to you that you have access to a really great tool that you can use to get ready for giving Black Tay, and that is the Nonprofit Toolkit. Um, the toolkit, toolkit was created by the Giving Black Day team, and it has tips and tricks, FAQs, walkthroughs, and it has templates you can use for email and social media to help you get inspired and figure out how to start talking about this giving event. Um, you'll also be able to find more training, so if you missed our first webinar, that is in um, that's it's in the resources section, um, but you'll be able, or the training webinar section. But you can watch the recording of that if you wanted to get up to speed on past trainings. I um, mean, you can also download some graphics that you can use to start tying your nonprofit's brand into Giving Black Day. So definitely, if you haven't already checked it out, check out the participant tool work. Um, the Young Black and Giving Back Institute really worked hard to make this toolkit great and useful. So definitely make use of it. <clears throat> Okay, so now with that out of the way, we're going to move into campaign strategy for Giving Black Day. So one of the best things and easiest things that you can do to give your nonprofit a head start on fundraising is to literally start fundraising early. Um, donations for Giving Black Day open up on August 26th, that's two days before the event, and that means that you have a few extra days to get some seed donations and build momentum for your campaign. Um, what seed donations do is that they just build excitement, they help you get some money in the bank that helps you place on leaderboards on the big day so that when the live event begins at eight o'clock on the 28th, you don't have a zero total, you've already got some donations in there. Um, the people that you should ask for seed donations are people in your nonprofit's inner circle. So think board members, volunteers, major gift donors, people who give to your nonprofit on a monthly basis, um, highly engaged supporters. <clears throat> this period can basically act as a a soft launch for your campaign. And the benefit to asking people close to your nonprofit is that you can also ask them for feedback about your, your campaign and their experience. Um, now, it's important to mention that these are not pledges or future donations. These are real-time donations that process immediately. But after August 26th, they just count towards your Giving Black Day totals and help you move up the leaderboard so that when we switch over to the live event site and you see those leaderboards, um, you'll already have some money there that you've raised and you'll be a little bit higher on the leaderboard. <clears throat> A great strategy for driving donations on a giving day is securing a matching grant. Um, a matching grant is essentially a large donation that your nonprofit leverages to bring in other smaller donations by offering it up as a match. So for instance, if you had someone willing to give your nonprofit $1,000, instead of just taking that check and putting that money in the bank and calling it a day, you could use that as a matching grant. So the terms of the grant are totally up to you and the grantor, but just for instance, let's say there's an hourly prize available, and you'd like to do whatever you can to drive donations during that hour so you can win. You take that $1,000 and say to your followers, hey, between this hour and this hour, um, donations will be matched up to $1,000, which basically allows people to double their donation. Um, people love a good deal. They love being able to make their money go further. Um, so a matching grant is basically like a BOGO sale on donations. It's a really great way to get people in the door, get traffic to your page, and start getting donations. Um, you can do a lot within the Mighty Cause tool, like setting up a cap for your donation match. Um, say $200 so someone doesn't come along and donate $800 and eat up your entire $1,000 match. Um, so it's a really cool and complex little tool that allows you to do a lot with a matching grant if you're able to secure one. And on our platform, one thing that we've seen over and over again is that a matching grant really, really does bring people in the door and get them making donations on a giving day. So since a matching grant is ultimately just a large donation, you'll want to follow the same process you would when you try to secure major gifts. You prospect, you cultivate, and you ask. Um, people who, who you should consider prospects for a matching grant 
are again your board members first and foremost. Um, sometimes an individual board member is happy to provide a matching grant, but one thing you can also consider is asking your board to work together to provide a bigger match. Or if your board still has to pay its dues for this year, for instance, <clears throat> you could utilize their dues by turning them into a matching grant. Uh, major gift donors who've given large donations to your nonprofit in the past are also good prospects. And providing a matching grant can really for them be a fun way to liven up their donations so that instead of just writing a check, they're actually helping your nonprofit grow and driving other donations and bringing new people in. Um, and you can also give the donor some extra recognition when you're promoting the match. So major gift donors who like a little shout out here and there are even better matching grant prospects. <clears throat> Corporate sponsors are also really great prospects for a matching grant because it's a fun, proactive way for them to get involved publicly and to draw attention to their company's philanthropy. Um, at this stage in the game, um, you really want to start making phone calls, setting up emails, and trying to cultivate and make these asks of people. So um, just because it's already August and the giving day is coming up, you may just want to go with people that you already have an existing relationship with, make the ask, and try to set up the terms of the match. Um, but just shore up those details, you know, make a couple of phone calls, set up meetings, and see if you can get a matching grant from one of your board members, from your whole entire board, or a major gift donor that you already have. <clears throat> And just as a note, you can have more than one match on Mighty Cause. You can have them simultaneously, and you can also uh, set them up so that they kind of start and close in succession. So you're not just limited to one matching grant. If you have a smaller grant that you want to utilize for a shorter period of time, or if you wanted to combine grants, you have the capability to do that. So as I mentioned, the Matching Grants tool on Mighty Cause is a really versatile tool and you have a lot of options for how you structure your match. Not all matches have to be one-to-one -one matches, where for instance, if somebody gives $20, their donation is matched for $20. Um, you can also do a two-to-one match, a three-to-one match, um, or a percentage match for each donation. Um, our matching grant tool does the math for you, so all you have to do is choose how you want to structure this. You can also apply a match when a certain number of donations has been received. So for instance, if there were a prize available for the most individual donations during a certain hour, you could say that if you get 100 donations within the hour, you get an additional $1,000 for your nonprofit, or however much that matching grant is for, to help you drive donation volume and traffic during that hour instead of trying to get a certain dollar amount. Um, so make the most of your grant funding if you're able to secure it. You can combine uh, funds into a larger match. Um, so for instance, if you have a, a group of 10 Rockstar volunteers who each can give $100 for a match, you can take all of their $100 and turn that into a grand since a $100 match is not going to generate too much excitement or go very far. Um, you can also post multiple grants at the same time as I mentioned, and you can post them in sequence so that you can set a bunch of grants up to fire one after another. Um, so I really don't want to make this sound too complicated. The tool itself is user friendly. We met, meant for it to be user entry level user friendly. Um, so you don't have to know a whole lot about matching grants or have used one before in order to utilize this tool. But I just wanted to make, that, make it clear that you have a lot of flexibility in how you structure your match. It's really up to you and the grantor and how you want to set this up. Now, if you get overwhelmed by the possibilities of a matching grant, if you're able to secure a grantor, um, I would just recommend setting up setting it up as a one-to-one -one match because that's the easiest and simplest thing to do, and that's generally the standard. So at the end of the day, a matching grant is basically a marketing tool. Um, so in order to make the most of your matching grant, you'll need to promote it. So the first step is going to the matching grant tool on your Giving Black Day profile and adding it there. Um, there's some marketing tools that are already built into the platform for your grant, such as putting a sticker on your donate button when the the grant is active, which you can actually see on the slide there, um, and some changes to the checkout process to reflect the match. And we also list any live grants on your profile, which you can see right under the donate button on the slide. Um, but you'll also want to add some information to your story too, especially if you have a really big match that's running for the duration of your campaign. Um, you'll want to promote it on social media channels, send out an email to let all of your followers know that it's available. 
Um, countdowns really add urgency. So counting down and sharing your progress can be a really great way to get people excited and urge them to actually stop what they're doing and make a donation now so that they can get their donation matched. So moving on from matching grants, I wanted to talk a little bit more, a little bit about ambassadors. Um, ambassadors are people who are usually in your nonprofit's inner circle who can help boost your campaign. So that includes board members, again, volunteers, especially highly engaged volunteers, staff members, and so on. Um, utilizing ambassadors can really help you break out of your existing list of supporters and engage new people. And most of these people are not individuals that you would otherwise have access to. Um, an ambassador can help you in a few different ways. They can simply share a link to your page um, with their social circle and ask them to donate and signal boost your campaign for Giving Black Day. Um, if you have a board member, for instance, who is very well connected, this can be a huge boost. Um, the other way that they can help you out is by getting involved in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a fundraising technique where you basically deputize your supporters to fundraise on your behalf. Um, the Mighty Cause platform is actually set up for easy peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. That was what we were started to do, um, and we've been doing peer-to-peer -peer for a long time, so it's very easy for individuals to start campaigns for nonprofits, um, so they can ask the people they know to donate to a cause that they care about. Um, and it's a really great way to shake up your campaign and acquire new donors. So if you wanted to try peer to peer, you would ask ambassadors to set up a fundraising page for your nonprofit on Mighty Cause for Giving Black Day. Um, so this may sound like a really big ask of your supporters. Some nonprofits are very concerned about that, that they're maybe asking too much. Um, but it's often a really fun way for them to get involved in giving in a giving day to help your cause um, and allow them to tell their own story about your nonprofit, how they came to know your work, how they have worked with you, and why your work is important to them. Um, and this really doesn't distract or draw attention away from your campaign because they're operating their campaign alongside yours and they're reaching out to people they know personally for donations and in most cases their friends and colleagues and family and people in their social network are not people that your nonprofit otherwise has access to to solicit for donations so typically you're picking up donors you're acquiring new donors through peer-to-peer so for people like your board, volunteers, staff, and program alumni, we don't want to leave them out, um, this can be a great way for them to get involved without just being asked to give money. And it can make it a much more meaningful process than just making a donation or sharing a link. So it can actually become part of your stewarding process and building and sustaining a relationship with that supporter. Um, we've also seen um, some nonprofits get great peer-to-peer -peer action going just by inviting people on social media or sending them an email asking for help. Um, for younger people who have a big social network and are really comfortable and savvy online, but maybe don't individually have that much cash to give, this can be an excellent way for them to get involved and help out and make a meaningful contribution. Um, so one of the things I get asked a lot in my line of work is how to engage the millennial audience. And this is a great way to do that because peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for young people is just natural. They grew up knowing how to do it. It's part of the fabric of, of their um, online culture. So it's something that they really understand. So for younger um, supporters of your work, this can be a really great way to get them involved. <clears throat> To help make things easier for them, you can share some images with them, some talking points, maybe some facts and, and logos with them, or even offer to help them set up their page since you should all be pretty comfortable on the platform at some point very soon um, if you're not already. Um, nonprofits that utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tend to raise more money on giving days simply because they have more boots on the ground. So it's definitely worth talking about how you can incorporate it into, into your campaign strategy. Um, the timeline's a little short, but peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser fundraisers don't typically need a lot of time to get set up. I can set up a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser on our platform in just a few minutes. So it's a very easy, quick thing for them to do and set up. Um, and again, if you want to, you know, 
give them some help. You can get in there and try to help them set up their page or direct them to some of our resources. And again, we're here to support everybody that's involved in your campaign. So we're here to support you. We're here to support your donors. And if you have peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, we're happy to hop on a call with them and walk them through setting up their page or just answer questions they have via email. So don't hesitate to direct people to us if they have questions about setting up their page because we want to help them get set up. So just send them to support at mightycause.com. So if you uh, managed to generate a lot of interest in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, or you've done that in the past for other campaigns and want to try something new, you could consider trying out team or event fundraising. Um, teams and events are basically more complex peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. Um, they can be great for groups of people who want to fundraise together, like your board, as you can see in the, the team page that's set up in the slide, um, companies, or just volunteer groups. Um, teams and events can be a great way to get people working together as a united front for your cause and inspire some friendly competition to keep them motivated at the same time. Um, like the difference between teams and events is basically that an event allows individuals and groups of individuals to participate. So a bigger peer-to-peer -peer undertaking, um, while a team fundraiser is a group of individuals working together toward a collective goal. So they each get their own individual page, and then they also have a team page where they're working toward a collective goal. Um, the cool thing about using our Teams and Events products for a giving day is that there are tools built in that make managing it much easier. Um, for instance, you can create a template fundraiser people can use to get set up more quickly and pre-fill some of the sections of their page. And you can email team and event members through the platform to keep them motivated. Um, so these are essentially just more complex peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. So if you're an old hand at peer-to-peer or you just have a ton of interest and you want to find a way to organize it better, um, these could be a great option for you on Giving Black Day. So your email list is going to be one of the most important tools on Giving Black Day because emails are a direct line to your supporters. Unlike, unlike social media, you don't have to worry about an algorithm getting in your way or preventing people from seeing what you're sending them or posting for them because unless they've unsubscribed, it just ends up right in their inbox. Their phone probably sends them a notification to let them know that you've emailed them. So I want to talk for a little bit about email strategy because that's going to be integral to your campaign on Giving Black Day. Um, in general, you'll want to keep emails relatively short, simple, and skimmable. Um, most people read their email on their phone these days, so they generally don't want to read a novel. They want to be able to skim through it and get to the point really quickly. Um, people are much more likely to read emails that pertain directly to them, so we highly recommend segmenting your email list by sorting donors into a few key groups. Um, donors who have given a lot are on a regular basis, um, one-time donors, people who've utilized your services but have never donated, one-time donors, your board, volunteers, and so on. Um, you don't need to craft entirely new emails for each of these groups, but you can tweak, tweak small things about the emails to make it more personal to the people in that group. For instance, in an email to volunteers, you want to acknowledge how they already help your nonprofit, all that they already do for you. And, uh, you know, you want to make sure that they know that when you're emailing them, you know that they're a volunteer for your organization. Um, and again, you wouldn't want to send uh, an email to a major gift donor asking them for a $25 donation. That says to them, I don't know who you are and I don't know all that you've done for my nonprofit. Um, so identify your key segments and figure out how to tailor your message to them. Um, when an email is ta tailored to the recipient, who they are and the relationship that they have with your organization, they are much more likely to open it and read it and take action on it. Um, how you segment depends on the program you're using, but most um, email marketing programs like Constant Contact and MailChimp, MailChimp um, use tags to segment groups of people on your email list. So um, you can usually find some information and support libraries for whatever program you're using, but that is a service that most um, email marketing programs offer. Um, one thing you'll need to pay close attention to is the timing of your emails, especially if you're aiming to win an hourly prize. I would recommend taking the time to schedule as much as you can beforehand, starting as soon as prizes are announced, which should hopefully be very soon. 
and have a template ready for things that you need to send out on the day of, like a blast email asking people to help you get to your campaign goal when you're really close, or an announcement that you want to prize. Um, as I mentioned before, most people read their email on their phone, so make sure that you choose a mobile-friendly email template. This is not optional at this point in time. You need to make sure that your emails are mobile-friendly. Um, and then test it out. Pull it up on an iPhone, use somebody's Droid, and see what it looks like, and just make sure that it looks good and all the buttons are working on uh, various phones. Leading up to the event, um, something that else that can be really helpful is A-B testing, um, especially with subject lines. Um, because you want people to open your email, you want them to actually read it. So A-B testing is something that can get you closer to knowing what people will actually open. Um, and A-B testing, if you're new to that term, is basically splitting an email up 50-50 and testing a variable. So let's say you're testing a button color or a subject line. Half your list gets email A with one subject line, half the, the list gets email B with another subject line, and which Every email gets the most opens wins the test. For the button color or placement, the email with the most clicks would win since you're trying to get people to click with a call to action button. Um, but you just want to avoid testing too many variables at once because you won't be able to tell um, if you have too many things that you're testing at once what was the actual successful variable that made people open or click. Um, lastly, your CTA should be clear and action-oriented. Um, donate now, give now, help us today. Those are things that work. Um, passive CTAs like thanks for donating or please contribute are not as effective. So you want your CTAs in your emails, the buttons that you are, what you're telling them to do to be crystal clear and urgent. Um, so in terms of social media, you really want to go where your audience is. That's the biggest piece of um, advice that I can give people who are uh, running a campaign is stay in your lane, stay in your comfort zone. If you have the most followers on Twitter, put the most time and effort into Twitter. Um, you don't need to go trying to figure out how to use TikTok if you've never logged into TikTok before and have never used it and don't know how to utilize it. Um, if your Instagram audience is really small and your Twitter following or your Facebook following is huge, you wanna spend the most time where your audience is, where you're most likely to see a return on the time that you invest. Um, so it's totally okay to stay in your comfort zone. I'm not saying ignore um, other platforms because if you have a small um, audience on Instagram, that audience still matters and you should try to engage them. But spend the most time and effort on platforms where you can do the most because you have the biggest audience. Um, I really recommend scheduling as much as you can before the actual giving day because these giving days can be a little bit busy. You have donors that you're interacting with. Um, so use the tools available to you. If you use something, um, you know, a, a program like Buffer to schedule your posts, you can do that. But they also, you can use the, the free tools that are available to you like Facebook's publishing tools, or now they have a creator studio that you can use to schedule posts ahead of time on Facebook, uh, TweetDeck for Twitter. Um, Instagram, unfortunately, does not really have a great way to do this, but you can can just get ready by saving any images you want to share on your phone and having text saved somewhere like in a note that you can just copy and paste and post. Um, you can also save them as drafts. Um, but I just recommend doing yourself a favor and getting your key content lined up beforehand. Um, it is helpful and recommended, but not necessary to budget for boosted posts on Facebook or promoted tweets. Um, it, a little bit of money goes a long way on social media when it comes to advertising. You just want to make sure that they are targeted correctly. Um, if you don't know how to target an ad, the easiest thing to do is to target it to people who already um, are following you so that you can make sure that they see it. Um, you want to try to post creative, engaging content. So photos, videos, um, stories on Instagram and Facebook are really great ways to get attention. Um, and you can also consider doing something a little bit out of the box, like a, a live stream um, of a portion of your day, um, because pe these platforms really like it when you go live and they reward you for that. So it's a really great way of getting people's attention. Um, and then 
just up, check out the, the nonprofit toolkit for more information about social media. Um, if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer. I am a social media marketer. That's what I do. So I'm happy to help you out. Um, but basically, just stay in your comfort zone and don't go too far out of the box. Just talk to your supporters. Uh, one thing I also recommend is having a point person available. So uh, somebody to check in on um, Twitter, check in on Facebook, and respond to any comments. Thank people for re retweeting you um, and so on, just to you know make sure that you're responding to comments because Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, they all like engagement. So the more you engage with people on the big day, the more likely you are to be seen in people's feeds because unfortunately they all use an algorithm. Um, so just you know engaging with people on the big day is is really important. So make sure even if it's a volunteer, um, just have someone on deck to respond to comments. <clears throat> Another thing that you want to make sure that you focus on is donor retention. Um, people who gave to Giving Black Day last year, if you participated, um, or other campaigns, they're, they're low-hanging fruit. So you'll want to make sure you've got a plan to reach out to them. Um, with donors who've given in the past, you'll want to work with them on securing their gift again this year, um, but also bumping up the size of their gift. Depending on the, the size of the donation, some personalized outreach may be in order to give people who gave over a certain amount a phone call, even setting up a meeting if it was a really big donation. Um, and you can use a blast email um, to, to contact people who gave a little bit less. But take a look at your numbers, take a look at what you did last year for Giving Black Day if you participated, and come up with a plan that makes sense for you. Um, and another thing that you can look at if this is your first year with Giving Black Day is who gave to your last fundraising campaign. Reach out to those people specifically, come up with a plan to retain them um, for your next campaign because odds are if they just gave to you for your last campaign, they'll be willing to give to you again for your Giving Black Day campaign. And finally, when you're planning your campaign, follow-up is important to consider. Um, when you're planning your content, you'll also want to think about uh, thank you content for your donors. Things like making a video or a photo of your staff can be really great for this to see the faces of the people who work at the nonprofit that they helped. Um, be sure to talk about the impact of the funds you raised and close the loop on your campaign. So that means especially if you were fundraising for something specific, like a new piece of equipment or improvements to your building or something concrete like that, you'll want to make sure that the people who gave to that cause are getting updates on your progress. Um, you'll also want to make sure you've got an onboarding plan in place for new donors so they come back to donate again. Um, if you collect addresses, mailing them a welcome packet can be a great way to get them onboarded for your nonprofit. And you can create an automated email journey where they can get more information about what kind of work you do and further enmesh them in your nonprofit. Um, and you'll also want to think about how to integrate your Giving Black Day donors into your Giving Tuesday and end of year plan. Um, so those are coming up there in December, um, but that can be a, a great pool of donors, people who gave to Giving Black Day, that you can tap again for Giving Tuesday, which is on December 3rd, and your end of year campaign, because December is the most active month for nonprofits. So um, you can start sowing seeds for that if you've already got a plan in place, um, but you'll, you'll want to revisit these donors on Giving Tuesday. Tuesday and in your end of year campaign. All right, so that's everything for campaign strategy. Um, I do want to make some time for questions. So if you have a question for me, just type it into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel. We'll see what we've got there. Okay, this is a good question. We have um, what you, we are a one staff nonprofit and need help to make this campaign successful. How can you help? So I can't actually help you with your campaign because I'll be busy on the day of managing the technolo technological end of Giving Black Day on our platform. But what I would really recommend is reaching out to volunteers. So if you have people on social media who follow you, see if somebody is willing to volunteer to help you out. Um, a lot of times you'll be surprised when you ask your volunteers, you know, is there anyone who has experience with social media marketing? Is there anyone who can do email marketing? Those are things that, uh, skills that a lot of people these days have. You have a lot of professionals in volunteer bases typically. So reach out to volunteers um, and see if you can get some support um, for your campaign. You don't have to do it all your own. Um, you probably as a one person nonprofit are gonna end up doing most of it. Um, my recommendation to you would be to, 
do as much planning as possible ahead of time. So get your emails drafted now, get them scheduled now, um, get your key pieces of content together. Um, and also just don't stress yourself out. Um, it's okay to be small. It's okay to be you know, a one person nonprofit. Those are the kinds of nonprofits people really want to support is people who are just individuals doing good in the world. So you can stress that as a campaign message. You can say, hey, I'm one person. I'm trying to do all of this. I really need your support on August 28th. And make that part of your messaging because that's incredible. That's a, a lot of work. Um, so don't be afraid of letting people know that you're small and definitely reach out for um, help from your supporter base, from your, don't, uh, your volunteer base, and your community. Um, if you have other nonprofits or partners in the area that you work with, maybe see if they can, they can help you out, if they can send a volunteer your way, or if they know somebody who might be able to help you out with whatever part of your campaign you're having the most trouble with. Um, but typically, as long as you're just doing something on the day of, if you're sending emails out, if you are um, posting on social media, you'll typically do okay. And again, you know, make that part of your campaign messaging because that's a really strong message and that's the kind of thing people like to get behind is just individuals who are doing their best to do good in the world and help with a cause. Okay, so um, there's a question about um, sharing this information. Uh, just so you know, you'll have access to the recording of this webinar. I'll also make sure that you can get the slides to download. So if you want to share it with a board member, if you have a volunteer you want to share it with, you will be able to share the recording. Uh, we'll post it to the Giving Black Day site, and we'll also uh, put the slides on there so that you can download them, so you can share it far and wide, share it with anybody who's helping with your campaign. So yep, yeah, you'll be you'll get all of that information. Um, so Jacqueline, uh, you can contact me um, personally. I don't know of anyone offhand. Um, I'm in Alexandria, Virginia, so I'm not sure where you're based. Um, but you may also want to reach out to Young Black and Giving Back Found Institute and see if they have any recommendations, if they know anybody, um, since they may actually know somebody. And I think they are uh, they are based in the uh, DMV area. So since you're in Maryland, they might be able to point you in the correct direction to get some help. But again, if you have people that you know that are in your circle, on your board, um, any you know social media followers, don't be afraid to ask for help. That's what nonprofit work is really all about, is just asking for help. Um, I'll see if I know of anybody who can help you. I can't think of anyone offhand. I would also reach out to Ebony and Chelsea um, and see, since they're spearheading this effort, if they have any contacts who can help you get your campaign together. Um, but again, if you're a one one person show, that is absolutely fine. Just scale it to what you can manage. Don't you know think that you have to do everything in the world for Giving Black Day. Just do what you can do and try your best. Um, and you can contact me individually, or you can reach out to Ebony and Chelsea um, at the Young Black and Giving Back Institute and see if they have any recommendations since I think they're uh, pretty local to you. All right, so it doesn't look like there are any other questions, um, but I'm available to all of you, so if you have anything you want to ask me, if you have a personal situation uh, related to your nonprofit and your participation that you need to go over, you can email me at linda at mightycause.com. That's L-I-N-D-A at mightycause.com, and I am happy to help you out. And if I don't know the answer, I will uh, try to point you in the right direction at least. All right, so that is it for today. Again, keep an eye out for the recording and slides on the Giving Black Day website because we'll be posting them there. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for attending. I'm really excited to see what everybody does on Giving Black Day. Um, it's gonna be an amazing day of philanthropy and I'm just so excited to work with all of you and see the great things you're able to accomplish. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for joining me.